Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. Well, a lot of people keep saying that January is the perfect time for trying new ideas for videos, and uh, yeah, after that lava hot spicy take that you probably saw in the title of this video, yeah, this is probably gonna be something new coming out of me. You sure this is a good idea though? You know you're gonna get dogpiled on in the comments for having an opinion counter to the popular perspective. Also, you've had the flu for like three days, shouldn't you be in bed? Well, it's already been like three weeks since the last upload and I don't want people waiting anymore. Uh, I've got my meds and I've got my tea with me, so I'll probably be taking hits out of this if y'all don't mind. And this is also something that I've been wanting to talk about for a good long time. So you remember about five months back I did this video talking about trying to fit into Japan and, and making friends and, and just generally trying to be accepted? Well, if you remember, that particular video was sponsored by Busu, which is an online language teaching system that I loved then and I still really love now. And yeah, to be completely candid, they are sponsoring this video. Now, I know what a lot of you were thinking. You're all probably thinking, ah, I caught you, Gaijin. You're being paid to talk about these things. You're being paid to actually justify this really crummy opinion. Well, back up for a hot second because you know, if you know me, you know it's not that simple. For one, this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a really, really long time. It just so happens that Busu came back after five months and was like, Hey, I want to sponsor another one of your videos. And it's like, cool, that's, this fits perfectly. Look, if I didn't care, if I really, really didn't care about this topic, I would have taken this sponsorship and literally would put it with any other video that I've got coming out in the next month or two. So please believe me when I say that this is something that I honestly really, really want to talk about. And for two, I really like Busu. I still use Busu after five months. In fact, you know what? Check this out. Here's the receipt. All right. I actually paid for an entire year subscription of Busu out of my own pocket, despite the fact that they said, oh, we want to give you free. No, that defeats the purpose entirely. My point is that I like Busu so much that I am personally paying for it. And you guys know that I wouldn't do any sort of promotion for a product that I didn't think was worth it. What separates Busu from other online programs I've used is the organic method in which they teach Japanese. Rather than giving you a vocab or grammar list, tell you to memorize all of it, and then lob all these quizzes at you, Busu introduces vocab and grammar through repeated practicality. For example, one lesson could introduce a new vocab word, and then immediately has you use it in a multitude of real-life scenarios in order to get your brain more familiar with the word. That's what I mean when I say Busu teaches language organically. The same applies to how it teaches kanji too. Unlike hiragana and katakana, which Busu also teaches, kanji is more symbolic than phonetic. And Busu takes advantage of that by drilling visual connections into the kanji it tests you on. Lessons also never feel extremely long and drawn out either. Each one is actually pretty small, but because of how hyper-focused each one is with what it's trying to teach, I've yet to have a problem with retention. But probably the coolest thing about Busu thus far is you have access to real-life native speakers within Busu's community to give you notes on your speaking and writing. So, if this sounds like a system that would work for your brain like it does mine, then you can go try out Busu for free right now, link in the description. Yeah, they went freemium so you could explore even more of the program to see if it works for you. Like I said, I like it so much that I'm paying for it, so try it for free, what do you got to lose? But anyway, let me get back on track here. Busu reached out to me about a month or so ago with a really particular problem. Over the last year or so, there have been multiple English-speaking Japanese YouTubers and other content creators who've been basically pulling aside programs like Busu or Duolingo or just a multitude of different either convenient or online educational tools for Japanese and have just been kind of picking them apart here and there. Like, one of the biggest grievances that a lot of these YouTubers and content creators had with these particular programs were things like constant use of pronouns, like personal or otherwise. It's pointed out in these videos that constantly using pronouns such as watashi anata, kare kanojo, things like that. It's not technically incorrect language use, it's grammatically correct, it's textbook correct, but to native Japanese ears, it's kind of freaking weird. Another complaint that I've seen from native Japanese speakers is that they'll accuse these programs of oversimplifying Japanese words. Like, konnichiwa, for example, is going to be the very first thing that any beginner in Japanese learns as an everyday greeting. But that's not really a, a common used greeting as you might think. Uh, typically, you're gonna use konnichiwa between, like, late morning, maybe, 
and maybe late afternoon? Moreover, when it comes to another greeting, Ohayo gozaimasu, which means good morning, the weird thing about this one is that you don't just use it in the morning. You actually can use it at different times of day. It's kind of confusing, but the best way I can describe it is if you're going in and you run into co-workers and colleagues and things like that, the first greeting typically given is Ohayo gozaimasu, even if it's like, Midday, I've heard people say it at night as a first greeting. I don't know, it's really weird and, and kind of all up in the air. And that's the whole point of, of these native Japanese English speaking content creators kind of badgering these systems, saying, well, it's, it's way more complicated than that. And I mean, even when it comes to sentence structure, there's something that these content creators are complaining about, such as this constant use of subject. Now, if you know anything about the Japanese language, subjects are constantly being dropped, and the subject is basically inferred based on the context of the sentence. So, for example, Watashi wa Gaijin Goomba desu. That's basically I am Gaijin Goomba, but it's in a sort of textbook form. Now, if I wanted to sound more natural, I would just say Gaijin Goomba desu. I would drop the Watashi wa in its entirety, because when it comes to native Japanese, that's just really weird to hear on a constant level. Then there are just some really teeny tiny nitpicks that I see here and there in these videos, like for example the difference between Yoroshiku and Yoroshiku no Gaishimasu, uh, which is kind of a difference of politeness, and it's... <sighs> It's not a huge thing, but it is still a thing. Or even something as small as saying dakai desu ne versus dakai ne, which both of these together literally mean it's big, isn't it? But one sounds more textbook than the other. So here's the thing. I'm not trying to argue against the points that these native Japanese YouTubers and TikTokers and content creators are trying to make. I actually agree that these things that they're pointing out sounds kind of weird. They, they are technically 100% correct. I mean, heck, I don't have native level comprehension with Japanese, but I know enough that, yeah, this would sound weird to native ears. But here's the thing, and if any of those Japanese content creators are actually watching this, please take this to heart as a US born, non-native Japanese speaker learning the language as an adult. I don't think that all these different systems that are being criticized I don't think they're necessarily bad ways of teaching, particular to older people, like young adults to middle age. I do want to put an emphasis on adult right here, because when you're a kid, learning a language is really, really easy. Your mind is constantly developing cognizance with the world around you. But when you're past 16 or so, things get a lot harder to learn, and language is definitely harder to learn when you're older. And that's kind of my first argument. If you're born into a Japanese family or if you're born into Japanese society, you have the benefit of both learning the language and all of the, the cultural nuances with the language at the same time. So all these subtleties and nuances that these content creators are talking about, you kind of learn that growing up. But if you're someone who's in your late teens to early to mid 20s, who didn't start out learning the language in the culture, like, what sort of grounding do you have for that? Now, I want to say one more time, because I know there are still going to be people out there who are going to be accusing me of this. I am not disagreeing with the points that these Japanese content creators are saying. What I am saying is that it is so hard to teach someone like me both the textbook language of Japanese itself and the cultural nuances at the exact same time it's not necessarily going to be the best way to teach someone. Now, I understand the argument here that language can't really be learned without the understanding of the sociological nuances of the culture that speaks it. Yes, I 100% agree with that statement, but look me dead in the eye and tell me that students who have never studied Japanese, never been to Japan, will always equally grasp both Japanese in a textbook sense and all the cultural nuances that surround it together at the same time. Because speaking from experience, I don't think a lot of students are. Some will, don't get me wrong, there are going to be some really bright people out there that's going to understand both of these concepts together. But speaking as someone who's been there, someone who started learning Japanese in early college, it's not going to be easy. In fact, I'd say it would be almost kind of impossible because English and Japanese are complete opposites both linguistically and culturally. For example, like I said previously, in Japanese you're constantly dropping the subject from a sentence. And if you understand the nuances of Japanese culture, and especially if you grew up in it, yeah, you 
probably understand the complicated nuances of Haraguchi nonverbal communication, but in English, being raised in that sort of environment? No, it's a completely alien concept. That's like if I walked up to someone and said, am Gaijin Goomba. Like, maybe someone could kind of understand what I was talking about based on the context of the situation and what I was saying, but it's still gonna sound completely weird and it's not gonna make a lot of sense to any native speaker. Now, take that concept and tell someone who sends cognitive thought to always use subjects in their sentence structure to just drop it, and also force them to try and use brand new vocabulary and structure that they've only ever heard Yoda <laughs> use in Star Wars? Yeah, don't you think that's gonna be a little bit too much for a brand new learner? And like, here's another big difference between Japan and the US, and it's Japan's linguistic social hierarchy that dictates their own vocabulary. Because between the US and Japan, it's just about as different as night and day. Like, let's take these two senses, Gokuro sama deshita and Oskare sama deshita. They both fundamentally mean the same thing, good work for today or thank you for your work. But you would never, ever, ever tell your boss, Gokuro sama deshita. Like, I've heard of people being fired for accidentally saying that instead of Oskare sama deshita. I mean, when I worked abroad, I think just about everybody in the office that I worked with would always say Otsukare sama deshita to everyone else. So I'm kind of assuming at this point that all of my co-workers and co-teachers would say Otsukare sama deshita to literally everyone to not mess it up. I don't know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, I don't know, but they did regardless. But in English? Dude, we call our bosses by their first names. We just have that level of casualness when it comes to our social hierarchy in the, in the workplace. While we do treat our bosses with due respect, you're not gonna find anyone who's gonna get fired over saying good work today in the wrong way. In fact, the English language lacks so much of the differentiating vocabulary based on social hierarchy that just trying to introduce the concept of I and you is going to be really, really difficult to a brand new learner of Japanese. I is always I in English, you is always you in English, but I in Japanese can be watashi, watakushi, atashi, sesha, ore, boku, and then you can be anata, kimi, omae, kisama. Like, I can tell a lot of you are probably getting overwhelmed by all this, and that's my point. I can't speak for the entire world, but I can speak for myself, and I can speak as a US-born learner of Japanese. You cannot sit down a brand new student of the language and just dump all of these nuances on them at the same time that you're trying to give them new vocabulary, new grammar structure, uh, new alphabets, and then expect them to just be able to retain it so quickly. Especially when a lot of these subtle nuances are completely counter to Western cultural biases. You need to have some kind of bridge to go into all of this. So when some of these Japanese content creators online say, don't use Watashi and Anata all the time, it's like, yeah, we get it, but we need some kind of bridge to mentally get us there in Japanese and then start thinking about, okay, what are the subtle nuances of Japanese? Okay, I want to use watashi or watakushi in this situation, or boku or ore, or, or, or just omit the subject in its entirety. We gotta have something to lead up to that. That's why so many different language learning supplements, whether they be books or websites or CDs, or even proper classrooms for that matter, they will teach elementary level of Japanese using a lot of pronouns, using a lot of subjects, and with a lot more streamlined expressions because you're teaching to a Western mind. There's gotta be some kind of gap coming in here between Western Japanese mindsets in order for there to be some kind of simple process in the beginning. Now, note that I say in the beginning very, very specifically. I'm not advocating the removal of all the cultural nuances of Japanese because if we did, there would be no Japanese language. It is what makes Japanese unique. Over time, students absolutely need to learn these things. But that's like step two or three in the language learning process. And judging from my experience of over a decade of being a Japanese language student, that's what a lot of these services and classrooms and websites do. They teach in a very simplistic and relatable way first, then get to the nuances. And look, I get it. Like I said, I completely understand where these Japanese content creators are coming from, and I don't want to call out any names in this situation because a lot of these people that I might be criticizing right now, I love their content. I really like their content. I love what they do. I watch them all the time. But it drives me so crazy that I keep seeing all these little pieces of minute criticism when it comes to all these different language teaching supplements that we use 
that helps us to try and bridge our brains between what we already understand from our own cultural biases in the West to how Japan thinks. Yes, understanding these cultural nuances is important, but the thing is students will learn this. And I don't just mean classroom students, I mean students who teach themselves through these kinds of supplements and these kinds of courses. I have never once seen any program, software, book, whatever, that teaches Japanese from elementary to maybe intermediate to even advanced. I have never seen any of these neglect a lot of these cultural nuances when trying to further teach the Japanese language. Now, I do want to recognize that one of the reasons why a lot of people have said that this way of teaching, not just Japanese, but any language is bad, is that you're going to have your students develop bad habits. And yeah, maybe that's the case if you're still encouraging it in the intermediate level, but you shouldn't. I, I, like I said, I have yet to see any program or class that actually neglect to explain these things once students are past the elementary stage of learning Japanese. I mean, I guess the only other thing that I could think of where this sort of teaching would actually be bad would be teaching younger children. Like kids between the ages of like 8 and maybe 15, give or take? Because like I said way, way earlier on in this video, this is the time when kids are absorbing cognizance from all around them, so it would be harder for them to break those sort of linguistic habits. But that's not what I've been talking about. That's not what I've been talking about this entire video, and that's not what I've been talking about with all of these online programs. Most of these, from my understanding, are for young to middle-aged adults. And yeah, you're going to still need that bridge of getting people who are culturally biased to Western concepts of, of nuanced language into Japanese way of thinking. Look. I get textbook Japanese isn't real Japanese. Textbook English isn't real English. But man, we all gotta start somewhere. And the only way we're gonna get anywhere is if we can find some kind of cultural middle ground between Western ways of thinking and Japanese ways of thinking. And it goes both ways. As someone who taught English in Japan, yeah, I had to use a sort of Japanese mindset in the process of teaching English. I couldn't just heap on every sort of cultural nuance when it comes to the English language into their heads because I knew it was going to overload them. If you sat down someone like me from the US or, or the West in general, learning Japanese as a brand new student and you corrected every little thing that they did wrong, every time their intonation was off, every time they sounded weird for using a subject too much or pronouns too much, every time that they didn't sound perfectly natural, how many students do you think are actually going to stick with it? Realistically, being that hypercritical, how many of them do you think are going to give up when they realize just how polar opposite Japanese is to English on both a linguistic and cultural level? So to the Japanese content creators who are making these kinds of videos that are discrediting all these different Japanese language services and supplements, I have to firstly ask you, if your video is starting from the very beginning of a program or a series of classes, is it even fair to expect native level cultural understanding of the language? Secondly, did you look over the entire set of classes, everything that's being taught, or did you only look at the first few? Because I promise you, if you go through the majority of these different classes and supplements and books or whatever it is you're criticizing, I promise you, you're gonna see a spot pretty early on that's going to be teaching students to drop subjects and, and use all these different cultural nuances that you're being critical about. And yes, I understand not every single supplement is going to be like that. Some of them are bad. I openly admit, some of these are actually really bad. And if that's what you're criticizing, feel free to ignore everything that I've said up to this point in the video. Look, I'm all up for doing things the right way. I'm all for teaching Japanese language students all the cultural subtleties that they're going to need in order to actually use Japanese in a practical way. But how effective is it to heap everything onto students at one time? For some students, yeah, I'm pretty sure that there are going to be some bright people out there that can do that. But for the average individual, I don't think that's really going to be that possible. In my experience, no matter what language is being taught, people need some kind of middle ground either on a cultural basis or linguistic basis. Language, especially Japanese, is going to take time to learn. And when your native language and culture runs so completely counter to the language and culture you're trying to learn, throwing everything at a student isn't necessarily going to be the best way to do it. You gotta find some kind of middle ground. Look, if you take anything away from this video, I hope it's this. 
language learning isn't simple, and there sure as heck isn't one best way to teach it to literally everyone. For some people, yeah, when trying to teach Japanese, teaching all the different nuances and whatnot at the same time as they're learning all the, the, the grammar and vocab and conjugation and everything, yeah, it'll work for them. But it ain't gonna work for everyone. And I would argue, especially as someone who's been there, if, if someone is thinking from a Western mindset, someone who uses a language in their day-to-day -day life that constantly uses subjects, constantly uses nouns and pronouns, doesn't necessarily have a good grasp on hierarchical vocabulary, it's not gonna work. Those kinds of people are going to need some kind of cultural middle ground, even if it sounds weird to native ears. It's a way for a student to be able to grasp the basics of a language before they get dropped off into the deep end of all these cultural nuances. As in all things, don't approach language education from one particular point of view. Rather, try to put yourself in this other person's shoes. Think the way that they would think and understand what they right now understand. Then from there, you'll know how to advance as either a student or a teacher. But hey, I'm just one guy, and I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there telling me how wrong I am for, for saying all of this, you know, despite it being a large part of my career for the last 15 years. So all I can say is, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. And I really do mean thanks for watching, whether you agree or not. And it's completely fine if you agree or disagree with what I have to say. As it's arguably misquoted from Aristotle, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. So. Thank you for entertaining this thought, thank you for watching everyone, and thank you to Busu for sponsoring this video. If you want to get cracking on learning a new language for yourself, and it doesn't even have to be Japanese, Busu offers like 13 different languages to learn, be sure to check them out. Check out my link in the description, try it for a week, see if you like it or not. But don't worry, after this upload I'm going to be getting back to my regular cultural analysis and games and anime and the like, and I got a lot of brand new ideas going into 2023. One of which is hopefully going to be coming around in February of this year, and I'm really excited for it. So. Thank you so much for watching everyone, be sure to sub up, get notified, check in about every other week or so on the main page to check out our newest videos and cultural dissection and popular media, and until next time everyone, this is Gaijin, signing out.